compare what he sees with what he sees not, what he sees not, what he sees will let him see what he sees not. Now let's go. The importance of remembrance of Allah in Islam is this. Allah Almighty created a hadith, which is iron. We know how useful is iron and steel for mankind. We use it for our technology, to build roads, to build bridges, to do technological you know, achievements, many things. Iron is indeed very useful for mankind. And so, some people believe that, okay, iron is the greatest thing God has created. No, there's something which is superior to iron. And all this, we have the verses in the Quran with the explanation and also with the commentaries, but we won't have time for that. So many areas where Almighty Allah referred to the importance of iron and steel in the Quran. And he deposited it for us in this world for the use of mankind. Then Another wise man said, no, iron is not the strongest thing. I thought iron is the strongest thing. Iron is not the strongest creation of God. There is fire. So as strong as iron is, fire can melt iron. As a nerve. And that's why you have been told to fear fire in this world. You can see when fire rages, it can destroy a whole city or building you built for 400, 200, 300 years, could be destroyed or gutted by fire in minutes. Fire is very strong. And again, the greater fire, the Hannah. May God protect us from the fire of Jannah. Then, the learned Muslims say, no, fire. Is not the strongest thing God has created. Fire to is under the control of man by Almighty God. There is water. Water can quench fire. Water has its forces and superior to fire. And we all cannot sit down here today without the use of water. We can live for a number of days without water, but we cannot live in this world without water. And the Quran refer to water in many verses that we have given you water to water your flocks and also to bring out the fruit for you from the land. And also you drink from it and you use for your cooking we even say that I need to go from one country to the other. There are so many uses of water. Allah has created water also for man. And water is very important also. And the learned man have said, no, you have the cloud in the sky. And the wind is superior to water. Let's not forget to tell you, the Quran says categorically, we created everything from water. Some people at that time of the only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says this man didn't know what he was saying. How do you create everything from water? How do you create um, wood from water? But wood started growing as a tree, and it was converted to so many things. Today, the science has confirmed what the Quran said 1,500 years ago that we created everything from water. But then you have the cloud and the wind. One of the greatest things, very difficult to control by man and the forces of nature. When you have the wind, the cloud over New York, and with the command of Allah, God asked the wind to blow the cloud to another area in New Jersey or Washington. The rain will fall there. You can see how the wind and the cloud also 
are superior to water through the command of Allah. All these items I told you are being used by my card. God has given man the knowledge, the power to control over all these creations of Almighty Allah. And so on the planet Malawi, I think man is the superior, the greatest thing, the most superior thing that we have created. God also told you which is more important, which is more difficult to create, man or the heavens or the earth. We created the heavens without any pillar or column, and you can see it for yourself. Then man now control the water, adopt it for its use, quench the fire, use the iron for technological advances. So, so many things we use our iron bridges, roads, aircraft, and so on. Then the learned Muslim believe that man is the greatest creation of God. But then something comes over the man, a superior to man, that is unknown. Sleep. The only one that does not sleep is Almighty God. Allah does not sleep or slumber. He slumbers not or he does not sleep. Because he is never tired. Unlike some belief in some religion that God created the heavens and the earth in seven days, and the seven days Almighty God rests. When you rest, it means you are tired. Our own God in Islam never, never rests. He's in command of the heavens and the earth. If he rests for one second, the whole universe and the whole creation will crumble. That's why Allah says in Surah Al-Rahman, mm -hmm. Every day, that Almighty God is on duty. God doesn't go and leave. He's never seen. He doesn't rest after the creation of the heaven and the earth after seven days. <laughs> the Almighty Lord is every day. On duty, let us give praise to Almighty Lord and the peer. Glory be to God. He made the sleep and slumber to be superior to man. Because when you sleep, you feel like half dead. You're gone. When you are rest, when you are tired, you rest and then you fall asleep. And then sleep is superior to man. And then there's something which is superior to sleeping. Al alak. All these are mentioned in the Quran in that order. Anxiety. When you have anxiety, you have palpitation, you have fear, you have not concentration of mind. You are not comfortable with yourself. You cannot sleep. Hello, my GP or my doctor, as you call them here, in London we call them GP, general practitioner. I cannot sleep, I have palpitation, my heart is beating hard, I have blood pressure, I have this, I have that. And colic is one of the greatest things God has created. Fear. Then you are unable to sleep, then fear also is superior to sleeping. Then what is superior to all this I've mentioned to you? One thing is superior to fear, and Allah has given all the answer in the Quran. Allah, wa bizikrillahi tatma inna Indeed, it is with the fear, it is with the remembrance of Almighty Allah that your heart can find comfort. When you have comfort of mind, the rest of mind, you'll be able to sleep and snore. You'll be able to sleep very well and happily too because you have the fear of God. You have the remembrance of God. So brothers and sisters in Islam, if you remember God, the remembrance of God, the Quran says, that my inner 
with the remembrance of God, your mind has comfort and it has satisfaction. And then you can sleep well. And then you can perform your duty as man. And then you can control the um, weather. And then you can control the water. You can use the fire. You can use the iron. So the greatest thing, which is superior to all this creature, is the remembrance of God. We have many ways to remember Allah. That will be the topic of another sermon. But the best way to remember Allah, one of the best ways, is antiquity. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. It's one of the greatest prayers that have been tested by the saints in Islam, people who are very close to Almighty Allah. If you invoke la ilaha illallah, oh God, I'm begging you with this word, with this sentence, you are the only one, the only one. You are the only God, beside whom there's no other God. I beg you with kind of la ilaha illallah, do this thing for me. And you recite la ilaha illallah 111 times, 303 times, 1,111 times, 11,000 times, depending on your time. And then you have your mind and you believe, you will see that God will do that to you because la ilaha illallah is one of the greatest remembrance of Allah. The other one, Kalima Tani, Habiba Tani, Allah Lisani, Takila Tani, Philip Lisani, Subhanallah, Wabi Abdulhi, Subhanallah, Azim. That's another way of remembering Allah. And so on and so forth. So let us learn how to remember Allah. And when we remember Him, let us concentrate. Let's praise Him. Let's appreciate Him. Let's give Him gratitude. For Allah, like people who thank Him. Alhamdulillah. 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 Giving gratitude to mighty Allah is one of the ways to remember Allah. So as I told you, there are many ways we can remember Allah in the comfort of our room, in our office, on the way, in the mosque, everywhere. May Allah teach us how to remember Him. And when we remember Him, may He accept our remembrance and may He accept our prayers. Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen. We give gratitude to Almighty Allah. I want to recapitulate the topic of our sermon today is remember the importance of remembrance of Allah in Islam. And I've exp uh, explained to you why remembrance of Allah is important and it is superior to so many things. I bring it down to you, up to your heart, and you can sleep comfortably when you remember Almighty God and you are able to do many other things in your life. May Allah teach us how to remember Him. May He give us the will and the power and the opportunity to remember Him. And when we remember Him, may He accept our remembrance of Him and may He accept our prayers. I must remind you every Friday, we should not forget that in the lie, Amr bin Abdi wa Nisad wa Ita is a God commands you to be just. Just is very important. In your house, in your home, in your office, Above you, people under you, people of equal age with you, you have to be just. <clears throat> when he said you have to be righteous, you have to be good. There's nothing as good as goodness in Islam. I always tell you people, do goodness to the best of your ability. Goodness is an insurance for you. It's for your family, it's for your children, it's for your future. You just do good. Sometimes it's very difficult to be good, but when you are good, the reward is coming. God does not delay the reward of righteous people. Do good is very important. When it ties in Kuba, whatever you have, remember your relations. Give them out of what you have. Don't say until I become a millionaire, I'm going to give them. Until I have thousands and thousands of dollars, I'll give them. If you have ten dollars, give your relation one or two dollars out of it. If you have one, give them ten cents. That is the way Allah has done it. That's why we can live in peace in this world. Don't be greedy. And Allah also forbids you as a Muslim from all acts of indecency. And fakshai, injustice. Injustice against justice. The other one is justice. Injustice is the opposite of injustice. God says you should not be unjust. 
God works against injustice. When mocking and all acts of indecency, we know them. All of us know what is not decent. We know what is decent and we know what is not decent in Islam. What is reasonable is Islamic, what is unreasonable is un-Islamic. Islam is based on rationality, sensibility, goodness. So you have to be reasonable. And also he forbid you to be rebellious. You are not supposed to be rebellious to those in justice, in office. You are not supposed to be rebellious to government if the government are not rebellious to God. You are not supposed to, re to be rebellious to those in authority, provided those in authority follow the way of God. The husbands are not supposed to be re re rebellious to their wives. And the wives are not supposed to be rebellious to their husbands. Everybody should not be rebellious. God doesn't like rebellion. They want you to be obedient, everybody following the way of God. So that we live a decent life. As a Muslim, yesterday and today, some people tell me a modern Muslim. There's nothing like modern Muslim. Islam is always the religion of the time. Religion of yesterday, religion of today, and religion of tomorrow. When I meet some of my diplomats and we confess, oh, Master, I think people should be like you and Mother Muslim. I say, forget about it. There's nothing like Mother Every time Islam is modern, you know, there are things which you modern people, you don't know today, which Islam has actually taught mankind. When the civilization gets to that level, you fall back and say, Islam decreed this thing 1,500 years ago. I give you an instance. In London, for many years, Women were being killed. They were not given inheritance in London. Only about 200 years ago, that they decided to consider women for inheritance. Women were given inheritance in Islam 1,500 years ago. Who is the master of civilization? Therefore, as a Muslim, you are equipped to be knowledgeable. You must be knowledgeable. You must be amiable. You must be amicable. You must be available, you must be accessible, you must be reliable, you must be responsible, you must be dependable, you must be reasonable, you must be impeccable, you must be <coughs> honorable. These are the qualities of a good Muslim. But Allah gave us the opportunity to have all these qualities as Muslims. <laughs> What you are in and I can't talk to him. We seek it, O God. We pray thee. Grant us peace in our heart. Grant us peace in our heart. Grant us peace in our home. Grant us peace in our neighbor. Grant us peace in our mosque. Grant us peace in our cities. Grant us peace in New York where we live. Grant us peace in America. Grant us peace in Africa. Grant us peace in Asia. Grant us peace in Palestine. Grant us peace in Afghanistan. Grant us peace all over the world where Muslims have been persecuted. Grant us peace, O oh God, so that we can have the opportunity to worship you with peace, with harmony, with happiness, and live a decent and peaceful life. ربنا لا تقبل منا لك أن تتواب الرحيم ربنا لا ربنا تقبل منا لك أن تصلنا عليه وأكل الدعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين كمو إلى الصلاة كمو إلى حكم الله صفو الله صفو